Good evening, and welcome to my time series presentation. As you can see by the title, I will be adding to what has already been called the Quantified Self Movement. The tagline over on the website quantifiedself.com is self-knowledge through numbers. My name is Carlton Matthews, and I will be your guide through some of my personal data. So how did I become interested in this type of data tracking? For me, it started after listening to a TED Talk given by Dr. Talithia Williams, entitled, Show Me the Data, Becoming an Expert in Yourself. She gave this talk at Claremont College in 2014, and she explained how knowing your body's data can help you make better decisions. It was a fascinating talk that pushed me to further my own data collecting habits. I had already been tracking several pieces of data for a number of years, but that summer in 2014, I purchased my first Fitbit Flex, started tracking how many steps I took, number of calories I ate, as well as the number of hours that I would sleep. But even though I've been tracking this data using Fitbit for the last two years, I've never actually exported any of it or looked at any of the trends. So here we get into this assignment. I decided to extract the first two months of 2016's data and see what we can predict going through the rest of the year. So from January 2nd to March 2nd, we will look primarily at how the number of steps that I've taken have fluctuated from day to day, linked in with the number of hours that I've slept and the calories that I've eaten. And I even decided to pull in some temperature data, some weather data, to look and see if maybe the temperature impacts how many steps that I take. So as Dr. Dr. Williams says in her video, show me the data. Here we have our first data slide. Taking a look at steps and hours slept. The blue line shows the number of steps taken. The yellowish green line shows the number of hours slept. There are also two reference lines that show the goals that I have for these two points of data. Step goal being 10,000 per day, sleep goal being eight hours per night. But as you can see, I'm consistently not meeting either of those goals. It is interesting to note though, that they do tend to mirror each other. So on the days when my activity is higher, I get more sleep. So here we have a similar slide to the previous one, but instead of looking at hours slept, now we're looking at steps in relation to calories. My assumption was that on the days when I was more conscious of my eating, I would also be more conscious of my steps. However, that doesn't bear itself out based on the data. If you look at the chart, the lines do not correlate at all. And if you look at the reference lines, you do see one thing that matches. I'm consistently not meeting my goal. I decided to see if the daily temperature impacted the number of steps. I thought it would be a simple task to pull in the necessary data. That was not the case. It took me a very long time, but eventually I found the quality controlled local climatological data on the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's page. This allowed me to extract data from the local weather station near BWI Airport. Now, with all of that introduction, you can see that um, when you're looking at the trend lines and you're looking at the dots here, that as the weather becomes warmer, my step numbers increase. So that's a good thing because we're now moving into the later part of spring, weather's getting better. I'm glad to see this confirmed. Chart is the most interesting to me. I decided to look at which days of the week I was the most active and got the most sleep. And here's the breakdown. I'm the most active on the weekends. This makes sense since I work in an office and I'm at a desk for most of the day. I also get the most sleep on the weekends. Again, this makes sense due to family work and school commitments. The interesting one though, was that I do the least amount of moving, get the least amount of sleep on Thursdays. I didn't really expect that. The question is, what can we predict for the, from this data that we have just seen? Looking at it, I expect to see an increase in the number of steps taken. From the previous slide where we talked about this, and as we're getting into the warmer temperatures, we should expect to see my step, inc my step count increase, which is a good thing. I'm also expecting this to result in a greater amount of sleep from when we looked at the sleep to step correlated graph earlier. All in all, I'm expecting much better numbers going into the spring and the summertime. 
Also, some additional observations that I made from this exercise. It's very important to have good data. That means that your data set should have consistency. I had to exclude a larger range of data because there were gaps in my logs. Even in this data set here, I had missing food logs, step counts, and sleep records. Also, sadly, I observed that I'm eating too much and not moving as much as I should. Going forward, I'm going to need to correct that. Thanks again for joining me on this look at my quantified self. I recommend you start tracking your own data. Who knows what you might learn.